Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Crescitelli with the Winter Garden Heritage Foundation. And tonight we are hosting Lynn Walker Wright and her sister, Amy Beckemeyer, as we talk about their grandfather, George Walker, who was Winter Garden's Depression era mayor. He put in a lot of services that we actually still use today in town. Those structures are all around town. We're going to be doing a little slideshow. So um, I'll be asking the sisters their thoughts <coughs> on their grandfather and growing up in Winter Garden. And um, think of it like a talk show. And these are our guests. How are you folks? Thank you so much for coming up. Thanks for having us, Jim. It. It's My an pleasure. honor to be here at the uh, foundation you. tonight. So good to talk to people who have such an invested interest in Winter Garden. You have a lot of stories, which, which it's all about the people. It's all about the people. So thank you so much. Shall we begin? Sure. Great. <clears throat> and that's George Walker. We call him a mayor with a mission because, um, well, <clears throat> there was a reluctance <clears throat> for him to become mayor, wasn't there? Wasn't there from what you've heard, from what we know? Yes, there definitely was. He was happy just being a dad and a husband and having a business in town. He was not strong about politics. Yeah, that often makes the best mayor. Right. Someone who's not strong in politics. Um, and for what I'm hearing is that uh, fiscally Winter Garden wasn't doing that great. When no. he was elected? Winter Garden was, uh, the way we've heard it throughout our lives, was that Winter Garden was um, nearly bankrupt. Um, that they did not have the funds within which to meet budget requirements. For example, they couldn't pay to keep the lights on. Wow. And so obviously you have an unsafe downtown area and that the police were not, uh, pretty much their budget was, was about to be cut as well, harshly, because it was in the 1930s. Sure, there was just no money for <laughs> services, right? And um, along comes George and reluctantly becomes mayor. And from what I remember reading the rolls, just a few hundred people voted in those days, but it became mayor. And I think eventually eight one term, eight one year terms through 1940. Yeah. So that's that's George. Um, you just picture him as quiet, unassuming businessman. And now he's running Winter Garden. This is um, what Winter Garden looked like in the late 1920s, early 1930s. Most of those buildings still stand. You're looking west along Plant Street. The corner is where Savory Restaurant is now. And the yoga studio is in that brick building. Main Street's down that way. So you're looking west on Plant. So this is the setting for when George became mayor. Mm -hmm. There, of course, is one of the pharmacies. Uh, you can see um, by the headlines that Winter Garden was broke, just like what you were saying. The next payroll was going to deplete the treasury and no money for street lights. Right. And I believe that's George and his wife. Mm -hmm. so we, call him, we call him Granddad and Memo. Tell, where, where were they in this picture? I don't, see, I, don't, I don't seem to remember. I think they were driving down to Florida. From what we can tell, that's what they were doing. Um, they got married just before he went into the World War I. Mm -hmm. And um, then they came and made Winter Garden their home. That's probably about 1918. Yes, yeah, yes, right before it was the war 1918. Started. Yeah. And Memo was born in Fellowship, Florida, which is just outside of Ocala. Okay, so so, up north central, sure. Yes, and Granddad was, um, came from Savannah, Georgia. Right, yeah. Those are pelts, I think. I used mm -hmm. to think they were fish, but I think they're pelts. Squirrels or something. They caught something on the road. Whoops. And, yeah, that is um, Walker Electric. Now, you must remember the store, right, on Plant Street? Well, the store was um, where the attic is now um, on uh, Plant Street. And um, he had an electrical company. And from what we've been told is he used to tinker and uh, with different um, electrical items when before he was in the war even. And he, uh, I guess, uh, invented some radio tubes and then he opened his store and he shared that space with the Valdezes. Um, so Bert Valdez, that would be his grandfather or father. Do you it's know Amy? Right. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. But they shared space. 
Um, the Valdez's that uh, did the printing and they had a form company. And they sh he sh the Walker Electric was one on one side of that and that's Mr. Valdez on the right where it says Valentine's. So you can buy like a television tube mm -hmm. and then turn around and buy yes. a Valentine's It says Winter quality. Garden Press. That's what the Valdez's had. Winter Garden Press. Yes, yeah. They're the that's people right. that had the printing company down Main Street. Also. Yes, they did. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is one of the election chits. He is listed up there, up top. Mr. Brady. And that's dated, oh, 1933. 1933. Yep. So just about the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's George Bray's name down below, and there's a Davis and Mr. Sullivan. So, the, and these folks all knew each other. Very yeah, well. They all knew each <clears throat> other. That is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, um, the Democratic president who ushered in the New Deal through the WPA in 1932, 1933, offering money to little, mostly mid sized cities, I think, for um, civil projects and civic projects, and also to put people to work. And um, it had a different names over the year. Uh, over, uh, had a different names over the years, but um, towns just like Winter Garden really benefited from this mm -hmm. program. I mean, you could apply and get hundreds of thousands of dollars to basically revamp your city. And um, George heard about it. George knew about it. And I always like to think of this picture as well. He's mm -hmm. obviously been fishing in Lake Apopka, probably a few hours before they said. <laughs> You need to be mayor. You need, <laughs> yeah. to, you need to not relax anymore and be mayor. So, uh, but he got the program right away because money started to roll in and projects came to this town like you wouldn't believe. Um, the lakefront used to look like that. Mm -hmm. um, the Lake Apopka lakefront was just kind of weed choked and uh, you couldn't mm -hmm. really do. You remember hearing anything about that? Yes. It wasn't really fishable, swimmable. And, and you couldn't get the boats in and out and there were no stores or no uh, place to dock your boats back then. Um, as the WPA days were going on, um, Grandfather Walker, with, along with other uh, businessmen mm -hmm. and names that we still know of today, uh, Mr. Shikone and Mr. Kappelman, um, those names uh, came together with Granddad. These men would do renderings or drawings because you had to submit to, um, in the WPA days, you have to send something, of course, by telegraph uh, yeah. to the, with your drawings and you could draw let's see what we can do with the lakefront let's see what we can do with downtown um, to uh, where now sits Tanner Hall or let's I remember my grandmother telling both of us that uh, Franklin Kappelman came over he used to be he was in had studied for one year at uh, Georgia Tech in drafting yeah. and he and granddad one night sat there in the house at the kitchen table and drew what a fire station would look like got it off in the mail and got the money to build it. That's right, just, just a handful of people, not a lot of bureaucracy, not a lot of paperwork. So lakefront is, you could see a lot of people put to work there, working on that lakefront, getting rid of all that weed. And that's the path leading to the dock. Mm -hmm. And apparently at one time it was lined with these giant palm trees. Mm -hmm. You could see the boat houses on each side. I think that's before they put in the yacht basins, what they call the yacht basins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. That drew people to town who spent money. And that's it. That is one, that's mm -hmm. one of the boathouses, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that is one of the little bridges leading to the mm -hmm. boathouses, mm -hmm. where the boats would come in through that entryway there and then dock. And this drew money to town, is what they're telling me. Uh, I think... Um, I think it was Jerry Shycone who said once, yeah, we knew there were a lot of people with money in this, in, in this country and they needed to come to Florida and spend it in Winter Garden. And, you know, they listened. They, they did. <clears throat> now, that's the um, fish pool that I was asking mm -hmm. you about. Do you remember that or was that way before your time? I, it was before mine. What about you, big sis? <laughs> um, <laughs> that wasn't nice. <clears throat> no, I don't remember that. Yeah. Uh, I would apparently, have met it if um, I did. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a feature that they might have removed to make room for something that they built later, right. possibly mm -hmm. Trailer City. I can't exactly figure out where that was, but yeah, I think that was way before your time. Those are tiki huts that they had over by the yacht basin. You can see the, the bridge going over the entry to the yacht basin. They had tiki huts for outdoor dining, I guess it was. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is all early 1930s. And there's the pool. Uh -huh. Yep. Um, we both remember that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. They called that, what was that originally called? Farns, Farnsworth? Farnsworth Pool. pool. And that was named for, who was, who was that family? Oh. Carol Farnsworth. Carol Farnsworth. Oh, I know. Farnsworth. Oh. It was her dad, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, that pool was the, the hottest spot to go to in the summer. I mean, all the, the mothers would, would uh, drop us off there, and then there was a little store right next to it down where the, you call it the yacht basin, where the mm -hmm. fisher, they had bait in the store. You could walk from the pool there, and they had all the little bubble gum and candies you could get. It was like the best day ever. Oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Right, 1930s, yep. We weren't there in the 1930s. <clears throat> no, so no, Judd. of course not. No, 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 no. <laughs> 70s, 1970s. Thank you, know. thank you very much. <clears throat> yeah, but um, yeah, they just um, here are guys working on these projects, and everyone's benefiting. Most mm -hmm. everybody is benefiting, and mm -hmm. that is Walker Fields. Mm -hmm. Now you must know something about Walker Field, the baseball field and the football field. Mm -hmm. Dad loved, uh, Granddad loved baseball. Yes. Um, we've always been told Granddad loved memo. And he loved baseball, and then he loved his grandkids. <laughs> but he loved baseball, and Walker Field was where they had the first spring training in the United States, believe it or not. What was that team? I it was the Chattanooga, Chattanooga Lookouts. Chattanooga Lookouts. And that's when they're clearing the field, and he was able to bring money into Winter Garden, also another project, to build this field, and they hosted spring training. And... Um, a lot of teams um, would come to town and play the Chattanooga Lookouts, and so he he was there. I think Memal told us many times, Amy, that that even on his lunch hour he was down in the baseball mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. And they had little buildings that ran along behind it for the players to stay in. Ah, okay, like dormitories like, or something. Similar, yeah, yes. in a way, yeah. Yes. Didn't some of them also hang out at the Edgewater Hotel? Mm -hmm. And somebody told me once, I don't know how true it is, that um, when the baseball players were in town, <laughs> the Lakeview High School senior boys were just out of the picture. <laughs> they were. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of marriages probably <laughs> happened somewhere in there that maybe married during spring training and not married anymore next year, but yes, uh, it was a big yep. deal. Yep. Yep. And then that, we love this picture at the foundation. They are watering <clears throat> and mowing uh, the baseball field over there. That's, look at all those people that are working. Mm -hmm. This is great. This is really good. Yeah. And there's George at the, um, oh, were those the um, dormitories you were telling me about, or they those were, the stands? They, that's the stands. Okay. They were further behind and just down, a, it was like a dirt road. And it was mm -hmm. all wooden, and each one oh, had okay. rooms, and it was, Wow. Yeah. That must have been something. <clears throat> look how proud he is of that. Mm-hmm. And I think those are the, um, that's either Winter, I think that's a Winter Garden, Winter Garden players team, the Winter Garden, um, oh, what they call them, the local team. They had the local league, and I think mm -hmm. those are the Winter Garden players, yeah, yeah. And that is Little Hall, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, was that, um, I know there was Tanner Hall, which we're getting to, which was bigger. What was this used for? Do y'all remember what that was used for, Little Hall? It was smaller red building on 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 the on the on the circle there. Wasn't it just for other um, gatherings, like a, a ladies' bridge or something of that yeah, nature? Okay. That wasn't as that didn't have the needs to go into Tanner Hall. Smaller right, weddings smaller that took place. Maybe someone was going to get married in the church. They could use Tanner Hall for a or the Little Hall for a reception. Okay. That was my understanding. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's still there, that little building, still mm -hmm. used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As are the baseball fields, as is the swimming pool, as are the, well, the yacht basins are being fixed up, I hear. Yeah, they're yeah. fixing those pools up. That's going to be nice. And he did that whole, they also fixed up the whole waterfront. They put a uh, mm -hmm. seawall yeah. just to keep the lake mm -hmm. away. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and famous Trailer City. Mm -hmm. Now that, you know, is when it was temporary housing for well-heeled travelers to come to Winter Garden to spend money on Plant Street in the shops and go to the restaurants, yeah. And a lot of them came to fish because Lake Apopka was the bass that's capital. That's true. We were, yep, that's right. The wide, largemouth bass capital of the world. Yes, it was. And now it's permanent. 
I love that place. I love Me down too. there. I know people that live down there. It's so it's so cool, right? And there they filmed the some movies down there too. Yeah. Several movies they filmed. Yeah. Some most of them have been uh, about the space program. They've taken shots when they did Apollo 13, for example. Oh. Um, they uh, they did several. Um, uh, you can see during that movie where they show Trailer City and the residents looking up over the lake, which is kind of like it's a broad horizon, as though they were seeing a takeoff. A jet is pretending that. The people in Trailer City were also in um, in Cape Canaveral. Oh wow! Oh, cool. I didn't realize that. That's cool. That's neat. Yeah, it's a special place, and um, again, put a lot of people to work. Put disused um, lakefront. You know, they made it pay. Mm -hmm. Guy was smart. Grandfather was smart. And there is a postcard of um, Trailer City and all the amenities. I mean, there was an orange grove at one point. There's the pool. There's the clubhouse. It. It just looked like a lot of fun. And there's, of course, the dock that's still out there, considerably mm -hmm. enlarged, mm -hmm. and the two boathouses, those two red buildings, mm -hmm. right. which aren't there anymore, but the yacht basins are. These went all over the place. They sent these by the hundreds of thousands up north. People came down. It's a wonderful Lake Apopka. There's City Hall. Um, there's a funny story about that, which you might know about. It had a jail in the basement. And whoever was <coughs> spending the night, the families would just bring, you know, dinner <laughs> up to City Hall downstairs. Yeah, that's beautiful little building, 1937, you can see the date. We have, it's been replaced, of course. That was where, is that, that's before your time also. Or was that replaced by the police station and the post office yes. now? Yes, when we were little, it was still there. Okay. Right, it was just beyond the post office. Okay, right over um, there on that block. And then later, and the youth center was behind yes, it. And, there, the youth center and the was tennis courts. Oh, so, okay. but yes, yeah, City Hall the youth was center, there. Yeah. Okay, that's a nice. It looks big. It was probably small in real life. It was. Yeah. And then. Um, uh, 1938. Yeah, six-year record. Great tribute to Councilman. Um, that's an article showing that. Uh, the city's doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. It's out of the red, it's back in the black, under George Walker. And um, he's feeling like he's done his job, mm -hmm. I guess, at this point. That's Tanner Hall when it was first built. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember hearing that it was also a gym, a gymnasium for basketball? Not me. Lakeview Did High you? School played basketball in that. Maybe I have heard that. Before. Yeah, for, for a little Maybe bit. before their gym was built, because um, we were yeah, talking about so. this a few minutes ago. Lakeview was not built until, what did you say, 1928? 27 or 28. Yeah. So it probably was a school before they, before they got the funds to do. Yeah, the big auditorium. The, uh, yeah. Or an auditorium or a gymnasium. Yeah. So that would make sense if they used Tanner Hall for that. Yeah, I think some of the folks, a um, whole other generation from us told me about that. Yeah, that they played basketball in Tanner Hall. There's the famous fire station, which is now, you know what building this is now. Yes. Winter Garden Art Association. That's Hoyle Pounds, mm -hmm. fire chief for 41 years. And that's the building you told me the story of Franklin Kappelman yes. drawing, mm -hmm. and then they, uh -huh. they built it from uh -huh. his draft notes. That was mm -hmm. what they decided a fire station looked like, and complete with a pole that you slide <laughs> down. Had to have a pole in it. And it was on Boyd Street. It was just beyond a, a block, block from, from Grand right. Dad. And yeah, Memo yeah. True. Granddad and Memo lived at 222 South Boyd, and the fire station is the, in the next block over. Yeah, 127, right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I guess they may have thought that if their house caught fire, they would have the station a block away. <laughs> yep. It's good thinking, huh? Yep. He also, I think, had a fire bell in his office, Hoyle Pounds, yes. the Pounds building on Plant Street, that he could just get all the volunteer Correct. guys to come up when there was a fire. Yep. Another WPA project, and that's 1938, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish those letters were still up there, you know, you know. And I, this is our um, final mm. photo, that's George Walker, and you're referring to her as Mima? Mima. Mima, your grandmother, yeah. yeah. She lived in uh, Granddad Walker Pass in uh, 1955 at 61 years old. Wow. And uh, Grandma or Mima um, uh, stayed a, a widow until she died in 1989. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's about right. right. Yeah. Was she involved? Stay, in stay the, in the same house, two 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 South Boyd. Two two two. Was she involved in the town along with George? Like, oh was yes. She, yeah. What What was her role? Like, as you can say, what did she What did she do? She was his biggest cheerleader. 
That's nice. You know? Yeah. Whatever was needed. And, if, and he treated her like a queen. Oh. Wow. She was his queen. They both were charter members, I believe, of First Baptist of Winter Garden. Wow. Yes, they were. Um, yeah. She probably made sure he was interested enough to run for another term uh, year after year until... Yeah. Whatever he yeah. wanted was fine with her. She, this was a match, they say, made in heaven. It was a match made in heaven. Nice. Because neither um, Amy nor I were alive when Granddad Walker passed. But we sit here today as though we walked, talked, you know, knew him, hugged him, ate with him because she made sure that her grand, his grandchildren knew exactly who he was. That's great, yeah. And we both have many, many items of his that she made sure to provide to us so nice. that we could learn the history. Yeah, I know. Um, your families have always been very much into, I mean, you guys know, you folks know a lot about local history. And I always say that it's, um, if you're invested in it because you've been here for generations, and you relate it to people who actually built the town. So your heart is in it, and that helps us so much at the foundation because you can share, even though you didn't grow up in the 1920s, 1930s, you could still share what you know and heard, mm -hmm. which is really invaluable. And people say to me all the time, well, there's not a lot of places like Winter Garden where the people mm -hmm. are so invested in their local history. Mm -hmm. For a small place, we have two museums and a foundation building. Mm -hmm. And that's due to families like yours who just keep the legacy going. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate you. The Heritage Foundation does so much. Just the different exhibits that you have housed here. The Dr. Gleason exhibit of recent was fantastic. Thank you. Um, Dr. Gleason, I can proud to say, delivered us both. Yes, he did. And she was probably heavier than I was. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, it's got to be a challenge, yeah. Well, he also delivered our first son. So Dr. Gleason delivered both of us, and he delivered my first son. Wow. Ah, so, oh, see. And, and he danced with me at my wedding and let me cry on his shoulder during my divorce. Oh, so <laughs> that's excellent. That's the kind of guy he was. He was yep. a great guy. From cradle to future mm -hmm. life, yes. Any other thoughts you want to share with our audience and myself? Just glad that we grew up here. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Just really glad. It'll yeah. always be home. Yes, it is. Yeah. And the Winter Garden is not a city, but it's a community. Yeah. And that's, that's what that's brings us good, back. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. I always tell people, they've heard it a million times, when I first started coming out here to explore in the early 1980s, late 70s, it really felt different from Orlando and Winter Park. This was a whole different world. It was, mm -hmm. to me, more about the people, like I say. Yeah, I still know people that I knew back in the 70s and 80s from out here, so, yeah. And a say lot of people points. have served. And when I say serve, I mean, I don't mean to serve time, but I mean, a <laughs> lot of people have served. If you ask somebody, will you join a, or, or throw your hat in as a council person or as a, on a member of a charity board or Grandfather Walker, he didn't really go out there with signs saying, let me be mayor. Somebody asked him, and so he and Memal decided, okay, yeah. if you can help, throw your hat in. That's the thing about Winter Garden. There's so many people here that serve. They serve the community. That's true. I've seen a lot of that as I've been working with the foundation. There was a saying that went around when Kay Kaplan was our director. Mm -hmm. It was like, you don't say no to Kay Kaplan mm -hmm. when she asks. You serve. So, yeah, see what she's brought us. Yeah. That's right and so many other people. Well, thank you both. We thank really you. appreciate it. Thank and you for um, thanks us. to our audience. You can visit us in person. Right now we're open from 11 to 3 on Fridays or by appointment. Just um, call me and we'll let you do research or make a donation or bring in some artifacts. We're up and running. We're doing very well. Thanks to people like you and our guests. So thank you very much.